Welcome, you're watching The Real Mid Might. And a couple of days ago, we saw Pope Francis endorse civil unions. And there's been a couple of debates going on. Has he really supported civil unions? Is it a mistranslation? What exactly is he talking about? And I kind of want to get on with, with those quick with those things quick because this video I want to focus rather on how we should how we as Orthodox Christians should view it. Some things that I want to say to people that might come from Roman Catholicism to Orthodoxy, some additional statements, maybe some arguments, clarifications that I want to make about this issue. Uh, because I think there's some of these things that people are missing out on. So uh, here we see the Argentine Archbishop and Pope Francis advisor. He's apparently saying that civil union is not mistranslated. So this is Archbishop Victor Manuel Fernandez, a longtime theological advisor. And I'm not going to read the rest of this article. If you're interested, you can just read it yourself. Uh, from This is from National Catholic Reporter. Now, by the way, um, maybe these websites that I'm sourcing, I, because I don't know these websites, maybe they're like the, I don't know, CNN equivalent of the Roman Catholic world. So, I mean, if that's the case, that it might be possible. I don't know these things, so don't jump headfirst and trust all of these sources. It's just that there's multiple news agencies that's kind of confirming the same thing. But we've seen over the past four years that media is never, at least this kind of media is never really honest. Uh, but I've seen this before that, Pope Francis's support of civil unions has an, is, is not actually new. Um, I do remember seeing something like this, that he, he supported this kind of understanding in like the 2000s, before he became a pope, back when he was a, he was a bishop. So I just wanted to add that, that there is, it's most likely the case that this is really nothing new. We're not seeing anything new. And one irony I want to mention is that you see a lot of Roman Catholics kind of asking Pope Francis to articulate and clarify what he has said. And that is because, as I said, they're basically saying, oh, we, don't, we can't really trust the translation. We, wanna, we want the clarification from the Pope's mouth. And this is kind of ironic to me because you will think that the Roman Catholic system uh, will already clarify certain things to us, but now we need clarifications for clarifications. Uh, look at this, Holy Father, we ask for clarity on same-sex unions. And I thought I thought this was a good tweet. I think, yes, this is indeed a bit, bit strange. Uh, other than these things, I don't really have any additional comments to make on both the Fratelli Tutti Frutti document and the civil unions stuff. Any comments that's going to be made by Jay and Sek, I already endorse. I don't really have anything new to bring out. What I have, this thing, I the, 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 the thing I'm going to bring out that's new, is going to be the Orthodox view and kind of my message to the Orthodox community. And I want to start by saying, uh, the first thing I want to say is actually I want to make a comment on the demonic subverters that are in the church. So. This is one of the Fordham people, Aristotle Papa Nicolau. He is uh, from Fordham University, which is a Jesuit-ran subversive university. If you see him and George Demacopoulos run away, these are demons wanting to take your soul and bring it down to hell. These people are not your friends. They're not your allies. No matter what religious faith you come from, <clears throat> these people are your enemy. So here you see Aristotle saying, this is quote retweeting Pope Francis' call for civil unions. By the way, I had to look at his Twitter to find this tweet and to look through all of the vomit and bile he posted. 90, 95% of his tweets and retweets is about how bad and evil Donald Trump is. I'm not a big Trump fan. Some of my viewers might be, and I don't really have anything to say about that uh, because I don't really care anymore. But I mean, come on, give me a break. Uh, who's better, the abortionist, Serbia genociding Joe Biden? Give me a break. <laughs> <laughs> he's not good either. He's not good either. Um, Sorry, right, I think I mixed Joe Biden with Bill Clinton. But nevertheless, Joe Biden is still a, a genocidalist. He genocides 
millions and millions of babies uh, in cold blood due to his support of abortion. And so is he better than? Is, so should we support him then? Um, I, obviously. And you'll see why in his own logic, even abortion should be legalized. He says, if this is confirmed, this is exactly what the Orthodox Church should be doing. Stop. Who the hell are you to say this X is what the Orthodox Church should be doing? Who are you to tell the church what we what they should do, what she should do? That's the first wrong. That's the first problem with these people is that they think they are in any position to tell the church what they should do. I know he's kind of saying this is what a bishop should do, but this kind of language, this kind of terminology, is disgusting because you're basically implying that the church is another earthly institution that is subject to change. It is not subject to change in its moral doctrines. It is not at all. Uh, it is the bride of Christ. It's You can't just, are you the husband of the bride? Are you the one married to the church? No, you aren't. And he's saying, the Pope is separating the political and ecclesial space. Full stop. What does this mean? Separation of church and state. Now, the interesting thing is, Patriarch Bartholomew, I have his book. It's written in Turkish. I forgot the name of the book. But he has a book. It's written in Turkish. I think it's translated to English as well. Maybe it's translated to Turkish from English. I don't know. I'm, I'm, don't ask me. Uh, where I've seen quite strong condemnations of secularism from Patriarch Bart. I am pretty sure I might not really know what I'm talking about. I'm pretty sure I saw strong condemnation of secularism, whereas you see from yourself who's supposedly defending Patriarch Bartholomew, all of this, all of that stuff. He supports secularization. And he, what does it mean that the political and ecclesial space is separated? Here is the problem. Here's what it means. Okay. You in the political space, you're basically saying, God, you have fun, little cool divine laws. But here in the real world, we're going to make our own laws because we are ruling on this earth. This is what separation of Ecclesial and political laws mean ecclesial is not just merely law made by uh, senile old boomer bishops. It's the law of God. You can't just uh, you can't just say, oh, you know, you have your own stuff. No, 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 no. Because for a Christian ex example, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give an example for a Christian. For any Christian, if you're going to justify why murder is bad, why abortion is bad, I mean, on a very basic level, for example, you can say, oh. Murder is bad because God says so. So you're invoking God already. You can give a longer answer to that as well. I know that like, you can say, oh, it's a murder of God's divine image. You murder God's image. You are murdering God. And that's an act of impiety. Being impious towards God is not good. Therefore, murder is bad. Like You can also clarify that. That's beyond the point that I'm trying to make here. The point that I'm trying to make here is all moral justifications are based on you can say ecclesial space. What he really means by ecclesial space is by uh, morality. You can say God's morality. I don't like that term, but you can think of it that way. So this is obviously a huge problem. You can't really accept this either. This is a completely stupid understanding. I mean, again, should we allow abortion to be legalized then as the Orthodox Church? I mean, if we listen to this idiot... We should, if you listen to this heretic demoniac, we should allow abortion too. We should completely get out of ASA. We should, oh, you know, the, the state wants to murder a bunch of innocent babies. Here, go ahead. We, uh, uh, it's immoral, uh, in we think, but, you know, you can do what you want uh, because we're seculars, you see. No, 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 no. This is a completely demonic attitude. You cannot have these, this kind of attitude. I want to kind of finalize with this with... What I want to say about people like this is that why I'm bringing Aristotle Papa Nicola up when I'm talking about Pope Francis and civil unions. Because is it the case that we have our own problems? Yes, not as big as the Roman Catholic Church, but it's still a problem. And I always, every time I see the Roman Catholic Church do a bra moment, basically, of what I'm going to say, a very stupid thing. The first thing I think of is like, that's really stupid. But I hope our bishops don't do it. I hope our bishops don't get any ideas from him. Uh, I hope they don't follow his footsteps, so to speak. And I feel like every time 
the Pope does something stupid, I think it's our job in a, in a way to, to look at our own subversives. Uh, and I'm going to talk more about that in the next segment. Our own subversives and say, oh, by the way, you don't get any funny ideas. You guys are demoniac heretics and we're going to oppose you. And this is why people like this guy, the Fordhamites, deserve to be ridiculed and to be never taken seriously. Do not take these people seriously. These people, as I said, these people are out there chasing your soul and they want to drag it down to hell where they are going to go if they don't repent. This is what these people are are wanting to do. And if you think I'm being too harsh, here's a word of advice. Read what the saints say about these kinds of people. There's multiple different books. They don't mince their words either. In fact, I am being a little bit too nice. I'm not being too aggressive. I'm being a bit too nice, in fact, to these people. But I want to move on to the next segment, which is going to be the last segment. I want to respond to the Roman Catholics here. And this is an argument that Michael Lofton makes, and you see this with a lot of trad calves. Well, this is something that this is a very classic trad calf technique. Bad thing happened in the Roman Catholic Church. All right, boys, let's attack the Orthodox now. This is this is the very this is a textbook Roman Catholic apologetical style. Bad thing happened in the church. All right, let's attack the Orthodox now. So. Michael Lofton says, Patriarch of Constantinople just expressed his support for BLM. If you think leaving RC for EO will help you escape the crisis in the church, you will be in for a major support. For example, I, uh, Lofton, it's very ironic that you acting like you're against BLM. I'm not going to clarify further, but I'm, I think it's very ironic that you act like that. Uh, that's one. Two, uh, he'll know. If he sees this, he'll know what I'm talking about. But uh, I also want to say, that first of all, this is a very, very filthy, immature argument. And you might say at first glance, it seems like a very normal, good mannered argument. I mean, some might say for a good reason. Look, isn't Michael often just saying, oh, the, if you're leaving Roman Catholicism because of, you know, the Pope saying stupid things, then, I mean, Orthodox seem to have the same problem. And yes, in some regards, we have... Uh, issues uh, so it's a completely fair argument he's just saying he's just realistically saying that you yourselves agree with that orthodox isn't this kind of paradise that some people think here's the problem with this argument number one to my knowledge in this article uh, patriarch Bartolom really didn't say anything different from what he usually says his rhetoric is typical anti-racism bad environment good you know that's kind of stuff I didn't see anything different from what he says there. In regards to BLM, I might be wrong. This I didn't see any explicit support of saying BLM is amazing, bro. Leaders are great people. I I haven't seen it. Maybe he did. Maybe he did, and I'm completely blind and idiotic. It might be the case. It's a 50-50. You can look it up for yourself. But I'm ne I haven't seen Patriarch Bartholomew support BLM openly. It's often is saying this, and the title of the article saying this, but. The title, I think it says BLM ideals and they're associating certain ideals, which some are good with BLM ideals, which I don't think aren't any support for BLM. That's number one. Number two, implicit equivocation between the Roman Catholic view of the papacy and the Orthodox view of its uh, patriarchs. What Lofton is doing amongst all Roman Catholics, and this guy is best friends with Eric Ibarra, who's a complete idiot, uh, have this understand they they both have this understanding of oh uh, the patriarchs of orthodoxy they're like the mini popes they have this understanding so they might even say no 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 I don't believe that but functionally speaking it is like that it's precisely like that and and this comment makes it very obvious that this is what he thinks he thinks that patriarch Bartholomew is some like mini pope that we have that people under him has to listen and this this is what gives birth to the rich orthodoxy idiocy arguments right because they think that it's all diff it's a conglomeration of different popes no this is not what orthodox ecclesial structure is it's far from what it actually is and that's the again that's the biggest problem here he's equivocating these two positions uh, when francis says something it is a serious thing, even if he says it casually, right? Then you have you have Denzinger. Jay talks about this numerous times. You have quotes from Denzinger 
saying that even if the Pope casually or like so says something that is non-dogmatic, you should still follow him, right? So if the Pope says civil unions are good, it's only right to follow him in saying civil unions are good. This is how they understand the position of a leader. It's dogmatic. It's in their dogma. There is nowhere in Orthodox dogma where you have to listen to what the patriarch says all the time. Is it the case that we have hierarchs that say very and say and do stupid things? Pa um, Archbishop Elpidophoros did something stupid. He ran with BLM while the church were closed. That's another thing. Classical atheists taught that Archbishop Epitophoros was a patriarch. He doesn't even know the distinction between a bishop and a patriarch. He's that idiot. He's that much of an idiot. This is, this is the kind of people that we're dealing with. They have no idea because they don't even try to understand our position. They don't even try to understand because they are scared. Because they know that the moment they try to understand it, they will become orthodox. Because they know that our position makes more sense. So they're basically closing off their veins. No, 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 no. I don't want. I don't want to know. I don't want to know. And they just want to live off with their stupid caricatures instead of listening to the people who live in the faith. Okay. So if pa let's say Patriarch Bartholomew said the same thing Francis did, it, you can't equivocate that with what the Pope did, right? You can't just act like. Here's the thing. What makes you think Georgia, for example, has to care what the Patriarch of Constantinople says? The jo Georgian Patriarch can look at that and say, that's, a, that's an abuse of your position, my friend. Like, what are you doing? Or Russia can say, that's an abuse of your position. Bulgaria might say, that's an like, they, you know, you're getting to what I'm saying, right? There's no reason why anyone outside of Constantinople has to really particularly care about these statements because he's not standing in as this kind of boss of orthodoxy. You can say he is first among equals, for example. You can say that, but that doesn't mean what you think it means. It doesn't mean that he is the boss of this church, boss of this gym. Uh, he isn't. Okay, he is not. And to, to kind of like summarize what I'm saying here is that there's an equivocation between the patriarchal position and the po papacy position. Our two ecclesial positions are vastly different between the Roman Catholics and the Orthodox. Uh, I will, I have some videos where I elaborate on, on, on that, on what that difference entails. And this is one of the arguments that I'm, and oh, final, the final thing I want to mention, and this is an argument that I will make in my next video, which is going to be top five or top six, I don't know the number yet, top six, for example, bad meme arguments against orthodoxy because there's a lot of them that we see. And this is going to be one of those responses that I'm going to be to one of the arguments is actually from this article uh, and from Orthodox Reflections. I don't know if Orthodox Reflections is a good website, by the way. Um, and you have like other people basically saying the same thing but but the genius of the orthodox church is that her very decentralization of authority makes it difficult for bad ideas to spread widely what does it mean what does this mean uh, you see now i don't like making these kinds of arguments because these are i think these are worldly arguments these are kind of earthly arguments um, i have a my friend said this very i think correct thing he said the difference between Roman Catholic apologists and Orthodox apologists is that Orthodox apologists, when they defend Orthodoxy, they say this is what the church always has done. Right? This is our argument style. We say this is what the church has always done. We cite earlier church councils. We cite the church fathers. We say this is what they have done. Whereas Roman Catholic apologists, what they do is that this is how the church should be. This is how the church should be ran. If there is no pope, how can you have dogmas? This is one of their arguments. They don't say, they don't make the argument, this is how they had dogmas in the early church. They say, how can you have dogmas? This is how you can have dogmas properly. Because of their view of doctrinal development and all that kind of stuff, if you add them in, it all kind of makes sense, right? So again, my point is, I don't like making these kinds of arguments. However, if I'm going to, I'm going to descend to the earthly level of Roman Catholic apologists they, let's say that yes okay the best church should be ran in best earthly way possible or whatever then let's talk about subversion right 
what is the best system that acts against subversion? Let's say you have two institutions. One institution is very centralized. Everything hinges on ultimately on this one guy and the other is decentralized, right? It doesn't hinge on a single guy. You can have a leader that kind of represents the unity in some senses, but it doesn't all hinge on a single guy, right? If you take out one guy, you still have 10 other dudes to deal with, for example. Which one of these institutions is easier to subvert? It's not a very difficult question, is it? If you try to subvert the centralized structures, the centralized system, there's only one guy. You take that one guy, the leader, the entire system is yours. The entire system is now compromised. Whereas the decentralized structure, you take out one guy. You can take out the most significant guy and, comp and, and he can be compromised. Does that mean the other nine guys are compromised and taken out as well? Not really. Let's say seven of them are compromised now. Does that still take out the institution? No, because the three other people are still not compromised in this example, for example. And so you can say it's largely compromised, but it takes a lot more effort to compromise seven people as opposed to just one person. And this is the point of this argument here. The point of this argument is that the church being decentralized makes it very strong against such attempts. And this is the weakness of the Roman Catholic system is that everything hinges on a single guy. You take out the single guy, you take out the entire system. And I think everyone will agree that Pope Francis is compromised on some levels. And, you, and I will even say, argue that many popes, even before Francis, have been compromised. Pope John Paul II, a lot, he's, he's a bra moment generator. So, whereas in orthodoxy, in his, historically speaking, there has been numerous bishops that were compromised by evil forces. Uh, by demonic powers and whatnot. Demonic, I don't really see, they don't have any power outside of what God can permit them, but you get what I'm saying here. But the system was never taken, and obviously, I mean, it, this goes without saying, the, the gates of hell will never prevail against the church. Obviously, that's a promise from Christ, but that doesn't mean that we cannot stay vigilant. And I want to finalize this video with that. We have to stay vigilant against these things as an Orthodox Christian. Um, if you're a Roman Catholic inquirer, uh, from orthodoxy uh, to orthodoxy from Roman Catholicism. It is important that I'm pretty sure you are inquiring to orthodoxy, not just because of the civil union stuff. I'm pretty sure there's a lot of things that push them. And this was kind of like the last thing that pushed them really hard. I'm Because most of the time, this is how it usually is. People don't just, one thing happens and people don't just drop something just because of a single thing. It has to be a multiple. It has to be multiple things that kind of push them away with this one final thing that kind of made their decision. So I kind of want to clarif clarify how we understand our ecclesial, how our ecclesial position is in contrast to Roman Catholicism, uh, when such things happen by Orthodox hierarchs when they do bad things, basically. And I want to finalize this with the gates of hell will never prevail against the church or defense mechanism given by God is vastly superior to those of earthly defense systems. But this doesn't mean that we have to be vigilant. When I Again, when I see the Pope Francis do stupid things, here's the problem here. Here's the, here's the problem ultimately with me, with the civil union stuff, is that the Christian side, uh, and I'm not acting like the Christian side is united, because obviously orthodoxy, Roman Catholicism, Protestant, you're not the same. But the Christian side, over time, is, secede, is ceding ground to the, for, the secular forces. And I don't like that. I don't like that one bit. I, I don't think it's a good thing that the Roman Catholic Church, for example, if the Roman Catholic Church supports civil unions in a more uh, extravagant way, for example, I won't be happy. I will be happy for all the people converting to orthodoxy and leaving the, the false church. But I will not be happy with what happens generally speaking because you will have more so-called Christians saying, I'm gay and now I'm Christian and yes, completely fine. And you have more of these people. You have more people getting themselves in harmful situations. You'll have more people uh, giving their souls to the devil basically, indirectly, uh, because the Pope let it happen. I, I don't like this. I don't like that the Roman Catholics are doing this. I actually have a huge problem with this. 
And I think the one thing that we need to do is that we need to look at our hierarchs. We need to let them know. And I think this is very important because I don't think they even know this, but we need to let those hierarchs know that, look, what the Roman Catholic Church is doing, we are here because we don't like that. So if you do the same thing, if you, do, if you pull the same shit, people are going to leave this too. And this is why people don't like Roman Catholicism, again, because they do this kind of stuff. I think we need to let these people know so that they know, okay, I can't just compromise on moral doctrines just to please a couple of mentally ill idiots. Because some people have bad ideas like that sometimes, unfortunately. Uh, I'm not going to act as if I completely understand their, their ways of thinking, but it, this is one of the to those things that contributes to it. I'm sure you can understand. That's what, that's what, what I think we should do. It's kind of just saying, look, you know, we got to cover our own bases. We have to be the refuge against these worldly things. And we have jurisdictions that are kind of like this. Rokor, for example, and I've never been in a, I've never been in a regular in a Rokor church, but I've seen Rokor, you know, be good in this regard. And this is why I completely support uh, figures like Mr. Father John Whiteford or Father Josiah Trenham. It's not like I watch their content religiously or like I'm a fanboy of them. Actually, I've never... I've watched some videos for Father Josiah and I've read some articles from Father John Whiteford. As I said, I'm not I'm not a fanboy. Uh, I, I will even go as far as to say I actually have some problems with what Father Josiah says. But those are minimal problems compared to what's going on, number one. Number two, the general message that Father Josiah gives is ultimately very positive and that's why i will be in full support of him and I, that's why I, I ask you to support him because you look at his enemies and it's full of demoniacs from public paganism i'm not going to name that filthy dishrag blog but you know you some of you know what i'm talking about you look at those people attacking him your stance is very clear you have to defend father josiah trendham especially when you see all of these supposedly orthodox harpies attacking him because he's anti-feminist which is and being anti-feminism is obviously a very good thing and not just the third wave feminism mind you all waves all wave of fem feminism is satanic and it's really good that we have uh priests orthodox figures even bishops that speak against these things whether they're in america whether they're in russia whether they're in in another country we need to support these people this is again i'm kind of repeating myself but we really need to support these people these people really need strength from us i think it's very important that they have strength from us and because at the end of the day all of us that these people call alt-right of orthodoxy right uh for example reddit says i'm alt-right never i've never supported alt-right i think alt-right and i'm not even saying this to placate to these people because i don't care what reddit or liberals think of me i think they're all degenerates and idiots but I have never been alt-right. I, I am completely against alt-right. I think alt-right is a complete joke. But these people think I'm alt-right. Alt -right. These people think that we who care about orthodoxy, who want the most pure form of the Christian faith, they think that we are alt-right. They think that we are far right wingers or whatever. That's what those people think. I don't care if they change their mind because they're already poisoned. They're already earthly. They're already disgusting vermin. And their problem is something else. I'm not going to be able to change their problem. They can think I'm an enemy. That's fine because they are the enemy. But what we can do is we can give strength and we can support our good, uh, good friends that support the pure form of orthodoxy. And that's all I really want, want to say is that we, this is the time to really tell all of our, let's say, based friends, I guess, orthodox people to kind of come in support of these people, even if you don't watch them even if you periodically watch them, to kind of say, you know, this guy is a good man or this man is a, is a man that you should follow. I recommend him, even though I haven't really seen him much, but just by, the, by some videos alone, you can see that he's a good character. And we kind of have to also say, look, these people are bad people. We can't let them have any control over the narrative. Like some people, unfortunately, are having this control. Although I suspect it is due to bots and paying uh, maybe to YouTube or maybe to a third, serv third party services. I'm not going to say who exactly, but some of you may know who I'm talking about. But that's all, all I really wanted to say for this video. Um, it started with Pope Francis and it ended with 
all of this stuff. But I think this is something that we really need to bear in mind. And the next video is definitely going to be, most likely is going to be on the stupid meme arguments against orthodoxy from Roman Catholics. I think the timing is going to be good because these are the times you see Roman Catholics make disgusting statements and disgusting stupid arguments against orthodoxy a lot. And I think it's time that someone actually compiled those and said, yeah, you are an idiot if you make those arguments. Um, so again, thank you all for watching this. This has been David, The Real Medvine. I'll see you guys in the next video. God be with you all.